Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about Western blotting technique. The total procedure and the protocol will be explained for you in this video and even the notes will also be provided. So please watch this video till the end. So now coming to the definition, it is a sensitive technique which helps in the identification or the detection of a specific protein in a sample. So here the best sample which I have taken just as an example, here the best sample which I have took is tissue homogenate extract. Homogenate is nothing but the cell aggregates. Okay, that cell aggregate should be extracted from the tissue, hence it is called as tissue homogenate extract. And in the sample, proteins, group of proteins should be present. So why proteins should be present? Because the performing Western protein technique for the detection of the proteins. Hence, here the group of proteins should be required. So make sure any type of sample can be, take, can be taken, but make sure that the sample should consist of a group of proteins. And from that group of proteins, you are going to identify a single specific protein. And that single specific protein can be identified or else can be detected by using a technique called as Western blotting. So by this you can understand that why the western blotting technique is used. It is mainly used for the detection of a specific protein from a sample. So now let us see how the technique of western blotting will be performed. First of all you are going to take an SDS page. This is your SDS page and now on this SDS page you are going to prepare wells. Right? All of this, this are, these are called as wells. I have prepared here four wells. First well, second well, third and fourth well. And now what you are going to add in these wells? You are going to add the sample. So here the sample which you are going to take is the tissue homogenate extract, right? Which consists of the proteins. So that sample you are going to apply in these wells. And now what you are going to do? You are going to perform the electrophoresis method. So remember what is mean by electrophoresis? I already explained the electrophoresis method in my previous videos also. So electrophoresis method is nothing but you are going to apply some voltage of current. Once you apply the voltage of current, then what happens? Then the movement of particles occurs from the wells. That's nothing but the movement of particles occurs from negative direction to the positive direction. So here the protein sample are present at the negative side of the SDS page, right? So once you apply the voltage of current, then what happens? These proteins start separating because the proteins will be in uh, four like structures. I mean primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures, right? So that separation of the proteins occurs. Once the separation of the proteins occurs, then immediately the movement of the particles of the proteins can be seen from negative direction to the positive direction of the SDS page. Okay, so one of the major important thing which you have to remember in this first step is that you are going to take an SDS page and on this SDS page you are going to prepare the wells and in these wells you are going to add the protein sample and now you are going to apply the electric current and once the electric current is applied to it then immediately the separation of the protein samples can be seen from negative direction to the positive direction because the movement of the proteins occurs. So this is the first step which you are going to do. Now coming to the second step what you are, what you are going to do in the second step actually. So keeping this apart, now on the other hand, you are going to prepare a basement and on this basement you are going to place a filter paper. So this pink color one which I have drawn is nothing but the filter paper. On this filter paper you have to place a sponge and on this sponge you are going to place this SDS page which consists of the proteins. So this blue color one are nothing but the separated proteins, right? So now this SDS page which consists of the separated proteins should be placed on the sponge like this. So this is the SDS page which consists of the proteins. Remember separated proteins, okay? So now what you're going to do? You're going to place a membrane sheet on this SDS page and on this membrane sheet you are going to place a weight and in this way you are going to arrange the apparatus and now here listen properly. Now what you're going to do is that you're going to apply some force on this weight. You're going to apply some pressure to this weight. Once you apply some pressure to this weight then immediately this membrane sheet will start attracting towards this SDS page. And then what happens, then the proteins which are present on this SDS page will start attracting towards this membrane sheet. It attaches to the membrane sheet, okay? All of these proteins which are present on this SDS page will get attracted towards this membrane sheet, okay? So now what you are going to do, you are going to remove this weight and now we are going to remove this membrane sheet also. So up to here, this will be your second step, right? And the second step, what you are going to do, you are going to place a membrane sheet on this SDS page such that you are going to apply pressure on this membrane sheet. So what happens, the proteins which are present on the SDS page will get attracted to this membrane sheet. So this will be your second step and now coming to the third step, this will be your membrane sheet. And on this membrane sheet, the proteins will be uh, present here because uh, the proteins has been attracted from this SDS page, right? So in this way, the, all of this blue color one is nothing but the proteins. So now here to these proteins, you are going to add the antibodies. So here, what type of antibodies you are going to add here? Animal derived antibodies, right? You are going to add the animal derived antibodies onto this membrane sheet 
and none of these proteins are also called as antigens and this animal derived antibodies are also called as primary antibodies okay so now these are the primary antibodies the orange color one which i have drawn is nothing but the primary antibodies and here the proteins are nothing but the antigens once you add the antibodies then immediately the antibody will start interacting to the antigen and forms the antigen antibody complex this antigen antibody complex can be seen throughout this membrane sheet because all the proteins are present on this membrane sheet itself so when you add the when you add this antibodies then immediately the antibodies will start attracting towards these antigens or as the proteins and starts antigen antibody complex formation so now this will be your third sheet sorry this will be your third step so what happens in the third step antigen antibody complex formation occurs in the third step and now here what you are going to perform in the fourth step listen here properly what i am saying so here in the fourth step what you are going to do now here up to here this is the process will be the same which i have said to you the antigen antibody complex will be formed right and now in the fourth step what you are going to do is that you are going to add the secondary antibodies also but make sure that the secondary antibodies consists of the enzymes so here this the green color one which i have drawn are nothing but the enzymes so these enzymes are present at the fc end so normally the antibodies consists of fab and fc end okay so this will be your fc end and this both will be your fab end so this is the fc end so now enzyme will be present at the fc end so what type of enzymes will be added i'm going to show you at the end of the video so now here we are go we are going to add the enzymes uh, along with the secondary antibody so that type of antibody which consists of the enzymes will be added to this membrane sheet and now once you are going to add the secondary antibodies what happens the secondary antibodies which consists of the, en the enzymes will start interacting towards this primary antibodies right so in this way the complex formation occurs the secondary antibody will get attached to this primary antibody now this primary antibody is also attached to this antigen don't forget here which i explained you before right so in this way the formation occurs for each and every uh, for each and every like thing for each and every protein the same process occurs where the secondary antibodies will be attached to this primary antibody which consists of the antigen right so up to here this will be a fourth step and now in the fifth step what you what you are going to perform we are not going to perform anything because it itself undergoes the process because here the we know the enzymatic reaction right normal enzymatic reaction in the chemistry we have learned about the enzymatic reaction where the enzyme will get react to the substrate and forms the product this is the normal enzymatic reaction right so in the case of this western blotting enzymatic reaction occurs because we have added the enzyme to this secondary antibody right so now this second enzyme which is present on the secondary antibody will undergo this enzymatic reaction process so now what you are going to do is that to this membrane sheet you are going to add the strong acids so here strong acids are nothing but the substrate because the enzyme which is present on the secondary antibody will react with the substrate so we to to add with the substrate we are going to add some of these strong acids into this membrane sheet once you add the strong acids then it will act as a substrate so now that enzyme which is present on the secondary antibody will get react with that strong acids which acts like a substrate and produces a product called as a color color will be obtained and that color can be visualized so now this will be your fifth step so what is the fifth step students so here we are going to add the enzyme uh, to the secondary antibody itself this will be a fourth step right and now in the fifth step this enzyme will undergo the enzymatic reaction in such a way that this enzyme will react with the strong acids and produces a color and the strong acids are nothing but which will act as a substrate so now how it can how now how color will be produced and how it can be visualized let us see in the next step so here i have said you that we are going to add the enzymes on the secondary antibodies right so now which type of enzymes should be added to the secondary antibodies actually see here uh, what is the main aim of the western blotting actually for the detection of the specific proteins so that specific protein which is suitable for that enzyme only should be added right so that enzyme should be suitable to that specific protein and that enzyme only should be added to the secondary antibody such that it can detect that specific protein okay remember my sentences properly and now in the next step what you are going to do you are going to perform the auto radiography technique in such a way that here the back, from the background the light will be uh, exposed and once the light will be exposed from the light box from the background then immediately that color can be visible how that color can be visible by the enzymatic reaction which is performed by that enzyme which is present on the secondary antibody right so in this way we can detect the specific protein by observing that light we can detect that this is the this is a specific protein which is mainly required for our use in this way we can detect the protein so what is the main aim of the western blotting technique for the detection of the specific protein which is present in the sample so this is a specific protein which can be detected by observing that color by using auto radiography technique so i have said you that the enzymes will be used for the, uh, which which are attached to the secondary antibodies right so what are the enzymes which will be used alkaline phosphatase 
horse radish peroxidase and radioactive labels so once you use this radioactive labels or fluorescent labels then enzymatic reaction doesn't occur because the enzymatic reaction occurs only for the enzymes but not to these labels so this alkaline phosphatase is the enzyme which is mainly prepared by the combination of 5 bromo 4 chloro 3 indolyl phosphate and nitro blue tetrazoleum and now the substrate which are going to use on this membrane sheet are nothing but peroxidase reagent or else you can also use luminol or NSR solutions and once you use these enzymes and substrates then enzymatic reaction occurs such that the color will be obtained in this way such that we can detect a specific protein so in this way the western blotting technique will be performed and the notes for this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the invite link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us in the whatsapp group so the notes will be provided there so if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box or else you can also ask in the whatsapp group and if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any